I'm having to stop every few hundred yards just to get my breath. But amazing view, isn't it? It's a pity I'm so dizzy and half asleep. I can't appreciate it. Just got to get to the top. Mont Blanc. It towers over Chamonix in France and Cormoyer in Italy. A year after my first adventure here, I had returned to run the TDS 2019. Previously a 120 km race with 9,000 meters of elevation gain, this year for the first time the route had been extended to 145 km with 10,000 meters of climb. With tight cutoffs and very technical terrain, it promised to be a significant challenge. The difficulty of the task had been exacerbated by a foot injury which meant I'd not run for five weeks before the race. Still, I arrived in Chamonix full of hope and expectation, if a little blind to the ominous clouds forming around me. You can't cheat this mountain, but you can't escape it either. Like a mythical siren, it calls you, and regardless of how underprepared you might be, you heed that call, and before you know it, you're packing your mandatory kit pinning a race number to your chest and following an endless procession of twinkling stars as far as the eye can see, up to the heavens and beyond. So I've had all my kit checked, I've packed it all back in my bag, I've got my piece of paper stamped, signed my name, and now the lady's giving me my number. Yes. 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 Thank you very much. Phil, my run. Hello there, buddy. How are you? I'm very well, We've thank you. We've not met before. I'm Dave. Hello, Dave. Nice well, to meet I you. I loved your video from last year. From last year. year. Well, let's and hope I finish again this we year. We commented afterwards, and I said, I'm going to enter the TDS. And, and here we are. Well. <laughs> are you ready for this, then? You all right? Yeah. So, yeah. Feel, feel good. Rested. Yeah. So you can do it, isn't it? See how it goes. I haven't run for five weeks. Four weeks. Oh, I've had a foot cool. injury and I just thought, well, I'm just going to have to. It's not too bad now, but it might just it might just come up and bite me in a minute. Yeah. We'll see what happens. So I'll be a. What are you having for around 20, 22, I reckon? Yeah. So I'll be about 10 hours behind you, I reckon. Uh, super glad to be out in Chamonix. It's just such an incredible place and such an amazing time of the year. And sadly, not racing here this year, but got to be sensible. So, what is the problem? Uh, just got a little bit of a little bit of a knee issue at the moment. But give it a couple of weeks, and it'll be, be back to normal. You were supposed to be racing TDS. Yeah. After finishing Western Stage, did you think actually maybe I won't race it anyway? Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't planning on racing, and then. Yeah. So yeah, I think just making the sensible decision. I'm in. I'm in it for the long run. Preparing now. For the Mountain Running World Championships for GB. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to getting back to training for that. Well, we'll let you go. Um, Tom's going to be crewing for me for TDS, so uh, we'll see him on the course. <laughs> see you later, Tom. Take care, bye. Are you doing TDS? Or did, what are you no, doing? CCC? CCC, I decided last night. I'm doing CCC. Because you're, you're on the list for a different one, aren't you? No. Definitely CCC. See, yeah, I was never, but I was never actually going to do it. And then I got like helicoptered off a race last weekend, so my and legs are now fresh. Okay, I'll do it. So I was it. like, huh, I've okay. not trained for this. I've never run 100k, but why not? So Holly is, um, well, now that you're doing it, is the <laughs> top British runner in the race. Five. Well, good enough. Well, <laughs> we'll see if I finish. Well, yeah. Have you run up here before? Uh, no, this is my fourth year being at, in Chamonix, yeah. UTMB week, without actually racing. I always have been rude because I have another race at the end of the or whatever. I still have another race that we can have to I just get confused with the number of Hollies. That are oh, there are quite, good ultra runners. Quite, yeah. There's also short. another British runner called Holly Page. Oh, um, is there? Who's, she's like. 
maybe ten years younger than me. Okay. But like she runs for Britain like steeplechase. Yeah. Um, and it's just very strange that she has exactly the same name as me. But yeah, I was like I was the first. I, like I got various messages from American universities like over the summer saying, "Would you like to come on a scholarship?" And I was like, "I think it's you got the wrong one age." But yeah, fine. Like. <laughs> So uh, this is Luis Alberto Hernando, ultra running world champion, trail running world champion, also winner of uh, Transvolcania on how many times? One, two, three, two, three times, three times winner of Transvolcania. Amazing runner, amazing runner. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Start time for this first edition of the new TDS distance was a crazy 4am. This meant getting up at 2am and getting on a bus at 2.30 to get to the start. Both the CCC and TDS races start from Cormier on the other side of Mont Blanc in Italy. I'm so tired already and I've not even started the race. Good morning, welcome to film my run. We are here in Cormier, it is five minutes to four o'clock. We're about to start the TDS. This one has never been done before. It's 145 kilometers, around about 10,000 meters of ascent. It's gonna take me about 35 to 40 hours to do it. It's gonna take them about 19 to 20 hours to do it. Way up the first climb, 700 meters climbed, about six and a half kilometers done, and you can see it's absolutely packed with runners. If you can see in the dark, I don't know, but there's loads of runners. Sometimes you get really clogged up, but it's probably as well because you can do with the rest. It's a long, long way to go. We are at 2,417 meters above sea level. We've climbed about 1,300 meters. And that's a run down to the first proper checkpoint in about three kilometers, maybe a bit more than three, four kilometers. So made it to the first official checkpoint. Three hours and eight minutes, 22 minutes ahead of cutoff, 15.83 kilometers in, and uh, feeling okay actually. So that's where we are now. Climb up, down, climb up. Okay, first checkpoint, I've got soup, I've got chocolate, I've got bread and cheese. I find it difficult to eat later on in a race, so I need to try and get as much food in early as possible, and then I just don't eat later on. kilometers in that was a really good 9k run down the hill there five and a half hours five hours 36 minutes
So we're at uh, Col to Petit Saint Bernard. Um, cut off here was 12:15, so we're well in time, an hour yes. in time. So I'm going to spend a bit of time here and get some food. Okay, there we are. There's a marathon covered on a TDS, 42 kilometers in eight hours, 17 minutes. So I don't know if that's the same as last year or a bit quicker or it's around about the same, isn't it? Somewhere around eight hours. So I'm no faster or slower than I was a year ago. At this point, I'm 50 kilometers into the race. And this, unfortunately, is where fatigue and lack of fitness begin to take their toll. From this point on, I'm chasing every cutoff. So there's Borg Sam Moritz down below us. Um, we're now on the very long climb back up again. It's 1300 meters of climb over six kilometers. And we've only done about one and a half kilometers of that. So it's going to take us at least another two hours to get up there. Working on a, you know, if we do it about 25 minutes per kilometer. I am totally, totally knackered. I've got an hour to get to the fort that's up there. It's, I should make it in about half an hour, but I'm having to stop every few hundred yards just to get my breath. But amazing view, isn't it? It's a pity I'm so dizzy and half asleep. I can't appreciate it. Just got to get to the top. Still absolutely done in after that climb. I've covered another three or four kilometers. And uh, there is an aid station in a couple of kilometers. So I'm gonna get there and then we'll see if I've got a chance of making the cutoff at eight o'clock at the other aid station. Do you think so? Yeah. Okay, so that's what we'll do.
pretty awesome, isn't it? And uh, a pretty scary bit of rock. Didn't get by it, no problem. He says confidently. I'll hold him the camera. Okay, see this bit here? I'm going to have to put the camera away and use my poles to get down here, I think. I just did that section, but I didn't want to film it because it's a bit sketchy. I'm not a fan of heights, as you well know. So, uh, I was a bit nervous going over that. It's going to be tight for the cutoff. I had a little period where I felt quite good but now I feel pretty rotten again. But it's just the climbing, I'm not fit enough. Okay, this is the aid station at 66 miles. I can't remember what it's called. But um, we had a really tough time to get here before it closes. It closes in about five minutes. I don't know if we can stay in here until then. I think we have to, yeah, we have to get out before before it closes. And so on we went into the night. By now though I was so tired all I wanted to do was lie down and sleep on the side of the trail which I did on a couple of occasions. I was just looking for any excuse to stop and rest. At the same time though I was desperate to make it to my drop bag at Beaufort checkpoint which was some 10 miles away. It was already going to be very tight with plenty of climbing still to do and then a very technical 2,000 metre descent down into Beaufort. I was moving so slowly I couldn't afford to waste time at aid stations. Do you have any soup left? Okay, so we're halfway up the climb out of the last aid station. It's unbelievably slow. At one point I was with the back markers, the sweepers. Um, we've got about 450 metres left to climb to the top of here. And then it's a massive, long, almost 2,000 metre descent into Beaufort. But thanks to these guys for being here for a bit of extra water. Okay, let's get on with it. Despite that rather determined final sentence, that's the last thing I filmed of my TDS adventure. I carried on up the climb until I reached what I thought was the top. I was now expecting the long descent, but as I approached a medical tent, I could see lights heading back up another climb. My heart sank and at this point I lost all motivation. I thought I'd been nearing Beaufort, but in reality I had another two short but significant climbs to negotiate and I simply couldn't do it. I lay on the floor at the medical tent and slept for half an hour. I was woken by the sweepers and made a half-hearted effort to start the climb, but by then I was never going to make the cutoff and I didn't have the energy to try. My race was over. Unfortunately, elite Brit Kim Collison, who we saw earlier in the film, also dropped from the race. 
However, my friend Holly Page finished her first 100 kilometer distance as top British female runner at CCC. And Luis Alberto Hernando was the outright winner, finishing CCC in 10 hours 28 minutes and beating Tom Evans' time of 10 hours 44 when he won it the previous year. And finally, my running buddy Richard finished his CCC race in 19 hours and eight minutes. TDS beat me this year, the mountain beat me, but I will be back and one day soon I will finish the TDS.